Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. Today we will solve this important question on lead code medium, which is called decode string. Just see the number of questions, just see the number of companies in which this question has been asked. It's a very popular question based on stacks and also a little real worldish because it involves encoding and decoding of strings. So we have been doing a playlist on stacks and queues, and these are the questions which we have already done so far. So now we are going to just so now we will talk about this. So what does this problem talk about? We are given an encoded string and you have to decode it. So there's some rule. So you are given something in a decoded, encoded format, which is not readable in plain text. Means not readable and not understandable, maybe readable. If you have to understand it, you have to decode it. For decoding it, you need a rule, you need an algorithm. So what is the rule for here? The rule for here is you are given a K within which you have an encoded string. Whatever you have inside the square braces, that encoded string needs to be repeated K number of times. And k is always going to be a positive integer. Uh, and then there are certain constraints that, um, uh, and then some more information, input string is always going to be valid. And your original data will never contain a digit. Your digit will always denote how many times you want to repeat that string. That's it. And uh, these are the examples given. The constraints are s is always going to contain lowercase English letters, the digits, and the square braces. So there are four entities the digit, the lowercase letters, and the square braces, the opening and the square uh, empty, uh, sorry, the opening and the closing square braces. What is the example? First example, we have a three, which means three is the repeat count. Within square braces, we have A. So A needs to be repeated three times. Clean. We have two. Two is the repeat count. Within braces, we have B and C. So B and C is repeated two times. And finally, whatever you have decoded previously, A, 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 along with that, you have to append your current decoded string, which is B, C and B, C. This was simple example. Tricky example is this one, the second one, and maybe the third one also. Over here, you have three, which is a repeat count. Now, inside square braces, you have this entire string. This is a string itself. Now, you have a A, then you have a two, and then you have a C. So, it's a nested case. So, C needs to be repeated two times. We got it. After C is repeated two times, you have to append it with A also. So, what is the total? The resultant string is A, C, C, not the cement, A, C, C. So, A, C, C now needs to be appended to so now ACC is the final string. This needs to be repeated three times. So ACC, that's why repeated three times. And this is the final result that you get. Now, what is the thought process behind this? For that, we need to move to the whiteboard to understand. And how are we going to use stacks to solve this particular question? So let's move. Okay, so into the whiteboard. So as I said, what are my entities? What I'm going to deal with? I will have a lowercase letter. I will have a digit, which will be my repeat count. I will have opening square braces and I will have a closing square braces. These are my four entities or my four characters. So of course, the first step is I have to traverse through this entire string. So I have to traverse the string. And while I traverse, each of them will be broken into single character. And these single characters, we can map it to each of these cases. Either it's a letter or a digit or an opening and a square brace. This much is clear for us. Now what do we do? How are we going to utilize stacks? So over here, we will take two stacks. One for the count, one for storing the count, and one for storing the character. What character are we going to store? Here, the character stack that we will store, now this role of stack is going to be over here to store the previously decoded string. To store the previous decoded string. What I mean by that? When you see this, here it is broken into two parts, this much and this much. First part is your previous decoded string is this. A, A, A. Now, when you come to this portion, while you do the computation for this, you cannot forget about what you have already computed before. So, what you have already computed before can be stored in a stack and then you pop it out from the stack whenever your need be and then you append it to my existing current character or not current character, current string. So, current encoded string is appending with the, sorry, the current decoded string is appended with the previous decoded string and that is where the role of stack is coming in case of the character stack. Next question, why do we need a count stack? If I'm getting a digit, I will just store it in an integer value. Why do I need a stack, right? So the reason why you need a stack for storing the count, firstly, your digit, your repeat count can be a single digit or it can be double digit also. Okay, your repeat count can be single, it can be double. There can be two cases. Now, your repeat count needs to be stored into your count stack. You can store into this when, when do we need to store it? We need to store it whenever we see a opening braces. So it's like, okay, I have a K over here and my opening braces start. The moment I have a K, I mean, my opening braces start, whatever I have in my K over here, 
I will store it in my stack. So that when I come to my, my uh, closing braces, when I reach the closing braces, here I will do the computation of, of what? Of what I have within this, this string. By pulling in what I, by my pulling, so my computation is going to take in what are the parameters? It is going to take in the k, what I have already stored in the stack. And of course, my previous decoded string. So you can think it in a very good man, way like this. My computation, which I have to do when I get a closing braces, needs my k, which is my repeat count, and it also needs my previous decoded string. So now you have to understand what are we doing in every phase and why are we doing it. We get a digit, we store it in an integer. We are not storing in the stack as of now. We will store in the stack when we get a braces, opening braces. So I will just put it down like this. You get a digit, you add to your integer variable. You get an opening braces. You get an opening braces. Now you store your count in the stack. You store your previous decoded string into a stack and you clear out your count and your current variable. Count and cur is reset. So this is for opening braces. You get your Closing braces. Before I discuss this, I'll also say, what if you are getting a letter? This is the most important, the letter within the braces. If you're getting a letter, you're just going to store it inside your literal. If you're getting your square braces, this is the hero of the problem. This is the hero of the problem. Here, you will actually do the compute. What is the compute? Like I said, two parameters, k and my previous decoded string. So, k I can just get from popping from the count stack this count stack dot pop. My previous decoded string I can get from my character stack dot pop. These two I've got. Now I have to do the repeat count. I mean, k is nothing but the repeat counts. I run a for loop based on how many, whatever the value of k I have. And I'm just going to append it with my previous decode. So my previous decoded string plus equals to my current decoded string. That is what we are doing in every phase. Let's do a dry run. So here is my count stack and here is my ch stack. Here is my count variable. Here is my curr variable. Okay, so let's do the dry run. We have a three. We will add into our integer count. We have a opening braces. What do we do? Couple of things. Whatever we have in the count, we push it into our count stack. Whatever we have in our curr, we push it into our character stack. Right now, we don't have any. Okay. We get a lowercase letter. In this case, we say we push it or we concat it with our current so we push C, sorry, we push A to this. Then we have a closing braces. Now is the time to do the computation. What do we need to do the computation? We need K, which is what we have in the count stack. We are going to pop it. So 3 is going to be removed. What we have in our character stack is also going to be popped. We don't have anything as of now. Okay. One more thing you have to understand is when you push something into the count stack, when we get our opening braces, you have to also reset this counters. So I have to reset count already because we already had a uh, opening braces. And during that time, we had also reset CURR, but we anyway didn't have anything. Af only when I got a uh, letter inside this, only then I've pushed into my CURR. So my count is basically zero. CURR is having A. This is the state we are in. We are over here. The closing braces, the first closing braces. What is happening now? Over here, I will get my count. Uh, sorry, I'll get my, I can say the repeat count from the stack, which is three, or I can just call it the K. Okay, uh, what is my previous decoded string is empty because my my previous decoded string is supposed to be contained in this character stack. I don't have any. My for loop will run. How many times my repeat count is there? Three times. That many number of times my current will be appended to my previous decoded string, which is anyway empty. So fine. So now at the end of it, my final current is going to be pointed to whatever I've computed so far. So over here, it is nothing but A, A, A at the end of the for loop. So my current is now going to contain A, A, A. Just to repeat, for loop is running three times because K is three and it is going to append your current with the previous. Previous is nothing, it's empty. So anything append to empty is the current character itself. So A will be appended. So now, now my current is having only A, A, A. Count is zero. Count stack is not having anything. Character stack is not having anything. Now I am going to two. Two. I will add to my count variable. Now I get to first opening braces. Over here, what do I do? Whatever I have in the count variable, I will push it to my count stack. 
whatever I have in my current that I'm going to push it to my character stack. So now my character stack is going to contain A, A, A. So I'm saying character stack every time. Actually, it is not a character stack, but it is a string stack. It is going to be like a stack of string. I'm just saying character stack because every time I'm going to add characters, it seems. But because you're already going to store the previous decoded string, it has to be a string stack. The data type has to be string. Okay, coming back. So now AA is pushed. Next, what do we do? We have to reset. So count is reset and current is also reset. So it is empty. Clear. Nothing is there. It is reset to zero and current is empty string. Now I get B. I get C one by one. So B and C are my lowercase characters. If they are my lowercase characters, they will add it to my current literal B and C one by one. So I'm just writing it together. Now I get a closing braces. Here my computation starts. What do we do over here? Repeat count is two. Previous. What is my previous? I will pop out from my character stack. My previous is A, A and A. Run a for loop two times. What is my current? B and C. What is my previous? A, A. So A A A will be added to B and C in the first loop. Again, the loop will run two times. Again, to this you will add B and C. It's like plus equal to whatever you have in the previous. You just append to it. Outside the for loop, now your current will be pointing to this. There's a reason why we are doing this. Current will point to this because eventually, at the end, your current is going to store the final decoded string. I mean, or you can say decoded string so far, so far, whatever you have done, because later on, when you again get opening braces, if there was any, this current, whatever it is storing is eventually going inside my current stack like this. So, so with that, I reach the end of the, uh, the, the string with the closing braces. Finally, I will return. What do I return? Who is containing my final decoded string current? So I'll return this current itself. So this is about the dry run where we have seen how is the stack, both the stacks playing a role to store the relevant count, the relevant string and then how are we finally doing the computation when it comes to the closing braces. Now let's see the Java code for this just to map it to whatever we have done just to map it to our algorithm. So here's the code for this. So I have two stacks. Here are my initializations running a for loop if it is a digit like i said i'm storing in my integer count if it is opening braces i am pushing it to my stack uh, the count and of course the current character whatever i have not the current uh, character again uh, it's misleading it's the string that i'm always trying to use uh, store into my this current and then i'm resetting the values when i get a uh, closing braces now i need to do the computation first i will pop out from the string stack whatever i have stored so far the decoded string get the repeat count, run a for loop for the repeat number counts for the repeat count and then add it to my decoded string. Finally, point my current to the decoded string done so far. Now again, the else part denotes the condition where it is not a digit, it is not a braces also. What do we have? A lowercase English character. So we just add it to our current. Finally, we return the CURR. So this is the Java code for this. Like I said, I just try to map every line of code with the algorithm that we just did along with the prior.